to start setting the sawmill up. Come here, come here. But uh, we've got an issue already. Good old flat here in uh, Nova Scotia when they grade the road. Uh, yeah. When they grade the road, it's like little razor blades all over the place. And I drove down a, a freshly graded road the, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? And uh, this is what we came up to. So uh, I'm going to get the tire off. I'm going to blow it up, see if I can find the, uh, the hole. And then I'm just going to see if I can fix it, see if it's fixable anyways. Right there. Okay, so we got the hole right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to clear it out with this. Uh, if there's a stone stuck in there, I'll push it through, get rid of it. And then I'm gonna stick a plug on this. It goes halfway through this hole here. And uh, I'm gonna put some liquid cement on both sides of that and then try to push it through and then rip this out, which leaves the plug in there. And then I'll cut the excess off. So I don't feel a hole, but just clean this up so it's easier to get the plug in there. This is a very small puncture, so it's going to be pretty hard to get in there. These are old plugs, so this is going to be very hard to get in the. There we go. Put a little bit of liquid cement. Both sides there. So the trick is to push this in, not so far that you accidentally push the plug all the way in, or else you have to do it over again. Uh, you want to have a little bit sticking up. And then you want to be able to pull this, which will rip through the middle, and then have these two plugs sticking in there. No. <sighs> it's days like this, I realize why roosters just scream their heads off as soon as they wake up in the morning. <laughs> I saw that online. Almost, almost. There we are, 40 PSI. One last check. No bubbles, perfect. The 
tire's fixed. This is where I'm setting up the sawmill. This is a uh, it's temporary home. Later on, I'll put down a, a cement bed and uh, build a sawmill house around it. But uh, what I think I'm gonna do, I was looking at the plans. Um, I'm gonna put these six by sixes. They don't go right under these uh, these things. They're more off to the side, and I need to make room for the log stops so it's not getting stuck and it can go through. But pretty much what I have is six by sixes that I leveled out. They're level this way and they're level this way. And then I've got six by sixes running this way to get it up off the ground a little more. And then uh, over here, we got the, uh, the saw head set up on a bit of plywood. Uh, I'm gonna assemble it over here and then we'll lift it up and we'll turn it to this position. And we'll try to lift the, uh, the wheel up, get it on the track and then lift the back wheel up, slide it on, and then put the stops on the end. So that's the plan, we'll see how well it goes. But uh, to begin with, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with setting the track up.
close, right? Really tight, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'll tighten this frame up mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll throw the string line across again like I did the other side and then we'll make sure that this is perfectly straight and then uh, once I've done that I'll uh, screw these uh, plates in and then we'll just tighten everything off. track here with a string line. I got it level and I got it completely straight going all the way across. Once I did that I screwed in the uh, the feet to the 6 by 6s and uh, I had all the bunks on here just loosely bolted and uh, once I had it all straight I tightened up the four in here but I made sure that the bunk was completely square 90 degrees with this one and then I started on this side I got this one 90 degrees and then I came over and I got that one 90 degrees with this one and I also made sure that from the outside edge to the outside edge was 30 inches and a half 
which is supposed to be. And then once I did that, I put the string line across, got this one straight and made sure all the way along that it was 30 and a half and that all the bunks were all 90 degrees with the rails. And then once I had it all perfect, I tightened everything up, screwed all the feet in, and I screwed all the six by sixes that are going uh, this way into the long uh, six, uh, six by sixes across. So we got that done. So now uh, the only, so I put log stops on this end, but I didn't put them on this end over here yet because uh, today what I'm gonna do is try to get the head assembled, get it up, and uh, I'm gonna try to roll it, lift it and roll it on. And uh, once I've got it on, then I'll put the log stops on. Um, I think it should work. Hopefully everything remains really good. It's all level, everything's perfectly straight, but uh, you don't know when you get the head on there and it's vibrating and you got a heavy log on. I don't know if it's gonna be moving the gravel around. The gravel is sat here and I did compact it with a hand compactor, um, but you don't know if that vibration and that weight is gonna move things around. If it does, I'm gonna to have to loosen everything up, redo it all over again. I hope I don't have to do that, but if I have to do that, I have to do that. Anyway, so today we're gonna to get the head set up, hopefully get this whole thing done. Oh. I put the, uh, do I do that now or do I do that later? Put log clamp attachment assembly. I bought an extra one as well. Where should I put them? I think the extra one's at our place. We can like all grab underneath and just try to shift this plywood over this way a bit. Grab what? All oh, underneath. The if plywood? we all come side by side, right beside me, yeah. lift underneath this plywood. Oh, uh, lift the plywood itself. Try to slide it okay. this way. That way, these wheels are lined up with the tracks. Yeah. Yep, come on. One, two. There we go. That's pretty close. That's good.
comes through I think like this. Down? Down. Can you hold that down? Nope, because I gotta screw. Finger like right where my finger is. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I was just looking at this belt and I'm like, man, should that be that loose? But then I just looked over and it says follower belt will ride loose. This is normal. So I guess everybody thinks that. So uh yeah, reading's important, I guess. Oh boy. Kind of okay, let's just get the bolts through first. Oops, that does it. So it's like almost to the end, but 
but not quite to the end is what they're saying. Yep. Do you want me to hold it with one hand? Uh, yeah, if you can do that. to the top on the top okay this feels like too long thing was to be able to try to push it. Oh, push it. On. Like onto the track? Yeah. Okay. Lift it up. Yeah. But do not Don't push move. forward okay. until I've tried to. Okay. Ready? Okay, I'll help. Yeah. Are we on though? Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Slow guys, slow. Alright, just take a breather. Everyone, just hold it still. I'm just trying to see how we are with the line here. Looks like we're getting there. All right, we're on it. Woo! That wasn't that bad. All right, now so we've got really a lot of tightening to do. Yeah, but they also say once it's done, we can push it back and forth. I know, but I want to put the uh, stop on. Yeah. yeah.
Okay, so I'm going to be putting some oil in here. Uh, for the 14 uh, horsepower engine on the 126, it uh, suggests 1.1 liter. And there's not quite a liter. So I'm going to cut the uh, the hour meter uh, so when the machine is vibrating this thing uh, runs but first you got to cut the cord which makes sense that way the vibrations of transport doesn't say your machine's running. Good enough. Put that in my pocket. Take this off. Um, these are stickers that you can stick on the engine. Uh, I think I'm just going to stick it over where the uh, weatherproof casing for the, uh, the manual goes. Okay, so I've got her filled up with fuel. Um, I put 1.1 liters of uh, 10W30 uh, oil in there. And uh, it's going to be the first time starting it up. Okay, so choke is on. Tiny little beetle kill log. That's the first thing I've ever milled up ever. So that was quite the experience. Uh, but this is my first actual log. So uh, because it's got a bit of a cant to it, I think I'll just go down an inch at a inch at a time until I got a nice square cant on the top, and then I'll uh, throw it 90 degrees and go with that. Uh, I'm as green as this mill, so like I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm just starting. So uh, anyways, let's see if we can make some lumber.
Okay, so I've got this in a square cant. Uh, now it's uh, seven and three quarters by seven and a half. So I'll probably, seven and three quarters, I'll probably just do um, one, two, three, four, seven and a half. I'll probably do about, uh, what is that, five? Five two by eights. I'm just gonna do a dimensional lumber. One and a half by uh, seven and a quarter will be finished. And uh, I can mix that in with some of the building that I'm doing. Um, let's see how square it is. So it's pretty square. It's not perfect. So I might have to uh, adjust the cables a little bit more just to really tone her in. But I tell you what, it's a lot better than the chainsaw milling I've ever done. first run through with the sawmill and I ended up with uh, five two by uh, eight uh, this one's a little bit under um, just from just from uh, that's one and a quarter inch wide but I'll use that for something uh, that was that was awesome so this log I cut without anything in the lubrication tank um and it ran super smooth the the cant was nearly perfectly square but not 100 percent. so i wonder if i can just adjust with the uh uh with the uh wires or not um but the uh the straight cuts it was phenomenal you look down it's like a razor uh so the cuts are perfectly straight uh really beautiful uh was it easy to set up no was it hard to set up no it's kind of in between uh if you're gonna get one and set it up, I would suggest just give yourself more time. I think they say it takes about eight hours to set up. Um, I kind of did like four hours here, two hours there, stuff like that, because I had to run around and drive kids places. But uh, it probably took about eight hours, maybe a little bit more, but I, I was just trying to make sure everything was dead level, straight, square, and I'm happy I did. And if you get one, you should do that. Just take the extra time, uh, and then your boards will be absolutely beautiful. Anyways, that's gonna be it. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel, like, subscribe, and um, there's going to be more videos. Uh, I'm very new at saw milling. This is my first log I've ever did. And um, uh, after about doing this for about six months, I'll put out another video uh, about do's and don'ts and whatever I've learned. Anyways, thanks so much. Have a good day.